it. See? It's good. It's good. All right. So I do have questions, or just more, not a particular question, but more of if we can do a, a little emphasis on, I guess, the summer training component, which I'm pretty sure you're going to uh, discuss. Most people just would like, uh, maybe just have just some general knowledge of what is the difference in terms of your nutrition when it comes to winter training as opposed to summer training. Like, you know, you know the hydration is such a big factor uh, I guess during the summer training, although and then people just forget about it in uh, winter because they're not as thirsty, but it's <laughs> important too. So it's just a little bit, I guess, summer versus uh, winter in terms of nutrition and, and, and fueling uh, for performance. And as you know, m almost 99% uh, of the athletes at this point hundred percent actually while well, athletes are, are all focused on the marathon it will be running multiple marathons uh, at least at least one in, in a couple of months right so i'm thinking september through the rest of the like through uh, through november right yeah. marathons berlin chicago um what are the big ones New York. yeah uh, first stop is uh the last chance of bq those people who want to just make the cut off of Boston, then comes to Berlin in terms of the majors and Chicago, London, mm -hmm. uh, New York, and then the late ones would be uh, uh, like Philadelphia, some local races. Uh, you also have people Twin City and, and then some other international races that are not major marathons. Got it. Oh, and then one last thing is, I recently encountered someone uh, who holds a muscle and it was, I think it was a severe strain. Uh, and, and they're like, um, and I think it's not, and they always keep cramping up, let's say, but it's sometimes I feel that it's not necessarily the hydration or the nutrition component, but it's just that their body is that fatigued and they're not ready to do the next training session. So for someone who's new and wants to push themselves very hard, and they may encounter uh, muscles uh, being pulled, or like Charlie horses, I think like this. And sometimes I feel that it's a combination of both fatigue, because the body's not used to the, uh, such a training low, uh, and and I think it can also be uh, uh, hydration. And but that's I think the first thought that someone comes in up with is ah, oh, it's hydration. But I think it can also be a sense of fatigue, uh, due to fatigue itself. I think we have enough people uh, to, to, to get started. I usually we start at 11.05. Oh, uh, will you be sharing your screen? Um, I will. So let's just, uh, let me just see how I do this here. Um, okay. So um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen, um, and uh, okay, my whole screen is coming up, and then I'll put the correct um, slides up. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see that? Okay, I can't see you guys, but... Um, uh, we can all see you and I can see everyone else, so I will help monitor. People. Yeah, please. If someone's talking, I won't be able to hear them speaking. But um, yeah. so uh, or I won't see who's I could hear them. I just won't be able to see who's speaking. So I won't be able to know the, your name. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I will assist you. I'm the your assistant. Awesome. All right. So I'm just going to just say welcome to Amy and thank her so much for joining us today to share her wealth of knowledge. We're really privileged uh, to have you. Um, and, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so thanks so much for having me. Um, I love talking about marathon nutrition and all types of running nutrition. Um, I, I'm myself a runner. Um, I've I'll compete anything from one mile to 50K. So I have a lot of experience with all those distances. I work with professional athletes. Um, with a team called Empire Elite Track Club. We're a mid-distance track club and they are trying to make like the Olympic team. Um, one of our athletes is actually at Worlds competing the 1500 tonight, which is super exciting. 
Um, so I have a lot of experience with all types of running and anyone who wants to run well, I'm like happy to help and create a nutrition plan. So today's talk is really for you guys. I, I kind of, I gathered all those questions that you guys had asked over this past week and um, created some slides and then uh, coach just gave me a couple other things that I want to bring up. Um, how long do you want me to talk for coach? You talk for about, uh, I guess, about 20 minutes. Then we have a Q&A and, and, and then just follow up from there. Got it. So I'm going to go through things briefly. And um, if you guys have any additional questions, you can always email me after or ask any um, follow ups. Some of the questions were a little specific, so I didn't I'm not addressing those. Um, but um, I'm going to address the most common things that people asked, uh, like fueling for different types of runs track workouts, long runs, workouts in general, fueling guidelines for marathon, electrolyte requirements, which I'll also mention about cramping um, and hydration. So running in the summer versus winter, um, some foods and vitamins towards the end. So the first thing I always kind of start with is that food impacts performance. And I see athletes all the time and about ones that are running really long distances and some that are shorter. And I always say like, the more you run, the more nutrients your body needs. I think one of the things that I find athletes do is they might run long or log long miles and then feel like, well, I could eat whatever I want because I ran so much. And I always say it's actually the opposite. If you're putting that much strain on your body, you actually have to dial in the nutrition even more. So it, the food and the nutrients in the foods become even more important. Um, here's just a bunch of different little uh, bubbles on how food impacts performance as well as all these other factors in your body. So if food is not really matching your energy, then you can suffer from energy production. That's like feeling tired um, throughout the day. It affects recovery or delays recovery. It affects your hormones, body comp, and all of these other factors. So if one of these things is off, I would look back at your diet and see how you've been eating that week. Um, basic nutrients. Carbs are the main source of energy. Our bodies need carbohydrates. If you run and you exercise, you need to eat carbohydrates. It doesn't mean you need cake and muffins and brownies, but it means that you do need healthy, complex carbohydrates in your diet on a regular basis. Protein is not a source of energy. It's really for muscle repair and to help your immune system. Um, fats also are not the best source of energy because it takes longer to convert fat sources into energy. So they're really used for making hormones. Um, they contain the fat soluble vitamins and they're really better for longer, slower runs, not the types of runs that you guys are doing. So meal plan and meal planning, really the most important thing is practice this before race day. Um, if any, like as I kind of go through a bunch of different things kind of quickly, maybe try and think of two things that you've learned from this that you can practice in your weekly runs or in your weekly routine. Um, and if you have additional questions, you can always follow up, but there's gonna be a lot of different information. Just hold on to two things that you think have been helpful. Um, so practice before race day, you know, I've paid, I have people that call me like, okay, I'm racing on Friday. What should I eat? Or racing on Saturday. It's a little late to really try anything new. And if your friend is eating something on race day, doesn't mean you should, and it doesn't mean it's going to help you to run faster. The goal is to get to the start line hydrated and fueled. Um, your body uses mostly carbs to fuel a run. And as I mentioned, the protein and fats, oh, I don't know why that did that, um, protein and fats are used just to support other aspects of your body. So this slide I can also send to you guys, I think, and it's on my Instagram as well. I think this is really helpful. The, I get a lot of questions on fueling a workout. So really if a workout or a run um, is less than 70 minutes, you don't really need to eat that much food. Under 70 minutes, you can go fasted. Um, and if you are going to eat, it's something really light. So a slice of toast with jelly, and that's got to be an hour before. If you're someone who's waking up like a half an hour before you're running during the week and you're running for five miles or doing a shorter workout, you don't need to eat anything. After the workout or after the run, 
you definitely want to have some food. So like 30 to 60 grams of carb, which would be something like eggs and toast. Um, if it's in the middle of the day, a salad with protein, maybe some fruit or a smoothie if it's later in the day, like if you're running after work. If your workout is more than 70 minutes, so this could be a longer workout, a longer tempo. Um, maybe it's a run plus some strength right after. You definitely want to eat something before. So your body has enough energy to last about 70 minutes. And after 70 minutes, you don't have any more glycogen, which is your quick fuel source. So then your body has to shift to using fat or breaking down muscle for energy, and it's not as efficient. It takes longer for your body to do that. So your performance might not be as good. Um, so it's not the workout that's too hard. It's just maybe you need a snack before you, in, before you go to the track or wherever you're running. So an hour to two before, 30 to 50 grams of carb, which is like two waffles with peanut butter, and you could put jelly on it as well. Um, you could do oats and fruit, again, if that's in the morning. A bagel is great, a nutrition bar, or anything that you've had before that you know your body does well with. So the key for the longer workouts in the morning is you have to get up a little earlier. Um, and I'll go through some other strategies if you want to sleep in a little, little bit longer. Um, and then after, getting in the carbs right when you're done. So I always say, like, you walk in the door, you're sweaty, you're uncomfortable, get some food in, get some calories. That might be a good time to take, like, a recovery drink. Like, I like scratch the horchata, personally. I think that's really tasty. Or a glass of juice. Um, you could do a piece of fruit or make a quick smoothie and then shower. And then when later on, when you're feeling hungry, you can have a meal. The purpose of eating right away is to tell your body it's time to switch from running mode or exercise mode into recovery mode. And you'll see that you feel so much better the rest of the day. So instead of just like kicking back or like taking your shower right away or rushing to work, put the bar out on the counter, like leave some food in your bag. So when you run to your office, you're eating on the way. Like you want to get the food in as quickly as you can. Um, on the run and strength days, so if you're running in the morning and doing strength later in the day, um, you again, you definitely want to have some food before that, especially if it's going to be combined together. Um, if you're doubling it and you're having one in the morning, one at night, start eating right after that run because then you can kind of start you're backfilling the fuel that you used for the run and then you're preparing for the next workout that you're going to do later in the day. And again, similar foods, waffles with peanut butter, oats and fruit, a nutrition bar. These are all really great things to have. And then afterwards, having like something a little more carb rich to replace all the energy that your body used. Um, here's a, just like a cheat sheet on the carbohydrates. I was saying like 30 to 50 grams afterwards. This is what carbohydrates are in foods. And it's a little more individualized than that. I was just giving you a general guideline. Um, for carbohydrate amounts. Um, during an endurance event, so during a marathon or even during a longer training run, here's again another way to look at how much fuel your body needs. So under hour and a half or 70 minutes or so, something like that, you know, the, the time is between like 70 to 90 minutes. And the reason there's a, a variation is because in the heat and in the summer, your body's using up energy at a faster rate because it's so hot and it's more stress on your body. So you might need to fuel a little bit more, um, like 70 minutes. And then in the, on the cooler months, your body doesn't burn through as much energy. Um, and I'll get into more specific information on hydration. Um, so an hour and a half to three hours, and this is really just like a marathon, um, this fueling guideline, 30 to 60 grams of carb per hour. This is your marathon. Um, I think Molly um, uh, Seidel, she does 30 to 50 per hour. Kip Chogue, when he ran the two-hour marathon, he was doing 100 grams of carb per hour. And this can't be done like, you know, starting on your last long run. It has to start now training your body, training your gut to get used to 
fueling like that. And you could see how your body feels. Um, I had um, one of my fast runners, um, uh, Brendan Martin, he runs like a 215 marathon. He gave me such a great tip. He said, you need to practice your fueling during your tempos while you're running marathon pace. So that's an awesome, awesome idea. So whatever your fuel is, um, carry it with you on your tempos and practice it. It would be you know, way better to kind of have some issues and troubleshoot during a tempo than during your marathon. Um, and then the other hours, like the greater than three hours or um, the longer distances, you need more carbs per hour because those events go longer. Or if you're a slower marathon runner and you want to take like four plus hours, you're going into the next meal. So you need more carbohydrates. Like if you start running at nine and you're done at like 12 or after 12, then you need more carbs because your body's using up energy just to be, just to sustain normal activity. In addition, you're doing the running and it's pushing into the next meal. Um, this is a slide on what to eat before a night workout. So Wednesday nights, you guys are at the track. So this is how to time your workouts or time your food for your workouts um, to maximize your energy. This is, I mean, our team, I thought it was really interesting. We always do practices in the mornings. Our, our team always practices at like 8 or 9 a.m., but our races, the professionals, the track races are always at like eight o'clock at night. So I said, coach, we have to let them practice their fueling at night just so they could see how their bodies are. Um, so I think it's really helpful to know how your body's gonna react to a night workout. So here's some great um, strategies. And you know, I think the lunch is probably the most important meal of the day, which is why I put the stars next to it. If you have a good high carbohydrate lunch, such as sushi, a sandwich wrap, or even a bagel with a salad, um, if you have a high carb lunch, that's going to fuel your night workout. So you don't have to stress about what to eat. And um, a snack would be really good. I think on those Wednesdays, set an alarm. It, don't get caught up in your work where you delay lunch and then you're, it's like late in the afternoon and you're eating a gigantic meal and showing up to track full. You don't want to end up like that. So lunch, 12 to 1, something like in that range. And then a snack. Set the alarm for your snack, like 3, 4 o'clock, and you'll just have a way better workout in the evening and your stomach will be empty at the start. Um, if it does get close to the start and you're feeling a little bit hungry, um, you could just do a goo, a gel, or like liquid carbs. Like a, like I wouldn't even do Gatorade. I would do something a little bit more carb-rich like... Um, uh, what I like the scratch drinks um, or any other kind of like Martin has uh, a liquid beverage as well. Here's some pre-workout foods that I like that are really easy to get. Um, if you're working from home, it's a little easier to access these foods um, than if you're in an office, but you can always carry some of this with you. Bananas are great. Like bananas an hour before a workout, hour to two. Um, oatmeal is always great. I would do that closer to two hours. Um, toast with peanut butter, banana, something like that. It's easily digestible and it's going to get through your body quick enough and give you energy by the time you hit the track. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, dates are always really great. I like putting peanut butter in the dates or stuffing them with like a little bit of almond butter. Um, I think that's a really easy food to, they don't look pretty, but they taste really good. And that's a really great uh, fueling food for before and for after a workout berries or apples and peanut butter is also really great um someone mentioned uh how about uh yogurt and granola before and after so is that's it? a great question so yogurt and granola i i love those foods um some people cannot tolerate dairy before a workout so i think you have to kind of test your own body and see how you feel i think a low-fat yogurt with some granola I mean, two hours, I would say that's definitely a two hour food because it's higher in protein. It takes longer. Um, it's up to, it, I think you have to test it and see how your body is. If you get like a little bit of an upset stomach or sometimes like a little bit more acid reflux in your throat, then have that as a recovery food because that's a fantastic recovery food. Um, and if you wanted that type, that food, uh, the, you can also do that at lunch. That's plenty of time for that to clear out of your body. Um, and be able to, so it does not affect you. 
So let's talk about hydration and electrolytes. Very important at this time of year. I get so many questions on this. Um, so really the most accurate way to know if your how much your body uses um, in terms of water and how much you need to replace is doing a sweat test where you weigh yourself before and after your workouts and you kind of subtract any liquids that you take along the way and then you know how much sweat your body uses i did one for eric holt i don't know if you guys know who he is he's a 1500 runner and he lost one pound of sweat in one hour so that's like uh two two liters of water around two liters of water per hour so that's tremendous um and you know, losing that amount and then going into the second hour, because it'll just accumulate, it, you lose performance. Performance starts to decline. And then the bigger impact on that is that if you are more dehydrated, you're not able to tolerate any types of gels or any types of fuel. So when I hear patients or when people are telling me that they have stomach aches or GI issues, like in the second or the third hour of a long run, Typically, it's hydration that I, I inquire about first. If you're dehydrated, you will not be able to tolerate any food because the, all of the blood volume is going to, it's shunted away from your gut and instead of digesting food, it's fueling your muscle. So there's nothing left to help digest your foods. So we need to keep the hydration up um, so your body does not feel depleted and it is able to tolerate any type of uh, fuel. Um, so practice hydration strategies, absolutely. It is so annoying, but you gotta carry water with you if you're doing a run. If you're in the city, find your water fountains and your Starbucks or the places that you can pick up a water. Um, I one time did a long run from Van Cortland I ran to the city, did a loop of Central Park and straight back up Broadway. And I just carried $5 with me and I grabbed water along the way at different places. So that was nice. I didn't have to carry anything, but mostly I, I run with a hydration vest and I just fill it up based on how long my run is gonna be. Electrolytes, when to use them. So electrolytes are definitely helpful. And coach and I were just talking about like how to prevent cramping. So cramping, leg cramping, um, side stitch, um, muscle strain, it can definitely be prevented. And I can't, we can't prove that electrolytes will prevent it all the time, but we can definitely make sure that it will help. Um, so electrolytes like um, potassium chloride, sodium, magnesium are found in these products here, like salt stick or um, the, the chewables or the pills. And if you're depleted in electrolytes, you're more likely to have leg cramps. And oftentimes when I hear about leg cramps, men tend to get it more than women for some reason. Um, when I hear that, I always ask about hydration and if they're taking in electrolytes on the run. So you wanna make sure that you're getting enough. Men tend to sweat more because it's based on your muscle mass. If you have more muscle in your body, you're going to lose more water and electrolytes. Everyone loses electrolytes at a different rate. Um, I always ask if someone feels like they're a salty sweater, like where they feel gritty on their arms, like their forearms, their calves, or like in their forehead, or if they see like salt stains on their clothes. Um, if they do, then we start with like maybe one salt tablet per hour. Each tablet, like and people I know are very fearful of taking these because it's something different and it's a pill, it's very intimidating. So I'd say to take one pill, it's about 200 or 300 milligrams, depending on which one you get, two or 300 milligrams of sodium. So if you compare that, like a Chinese food meal probably has 1200 milligrams of sodium. So if I'm asking you to take 200, that's not that much. Some people can use even more. They can go up to like four tablets in an hour. So start with one per hour and I take it with water and you could see how your body feels. Um, one of the runners on your team just tried it for the first time and said it was a total game changer. Um, and I think that's so awesome. I was so excited that that was helping uh, this person run. Um, and you know, other ways to know if you are like, if you need electrolytes, um, 
you start to get a little confused towards the end of a long run, or you are so tired and you know you've had enough gels. So it could be an electrolyte imbalance. Um, it's, you know, I think, again, the best way to, to know is to take a small amount and see how you feel. You could take it on any type of run and just see how it how your body feels. I, I think they're definitely helpful. Nun tablets are another source of electrolytes. The only issue with Nun, it has, it's a liquid. I don't know how people carry that. I guess you carry an extra bottle on your runs or maybe after your runs. But I think this is a concentrated amount. It's easy to carry. Um, you can also get them in gels. Some gels have electrolytes. Um, someone asked me about um, the Martin gels. So, you know, I think those are good. I think the Martins are good. Um, oh, that was Jennifer, Nolan did. So I was looking that up before we, before we started this talk. So I was surprised. I thought that had electrolytes, but it, it doesn't have that much. It had 34 milligrams of sodium for the 100, the gel 100, the sports fuel 100, which is fine, but that's 34 milligrams. And I think you need a minimum of like 200 per hour just to make a difference. Um, other gels like the SIS has a little bit more. I didn't get, oh, that is 300 milligrams. So that's pretty good. So, um, you know, just to kind of give you guys an idea, you know, if I use the um, Agu uh, salted caramel, which I think has about 50 or 100, and then I take salt tablets as well. Um, the salt stick is sending me samples. <clears throat> Depending on how many they send me, I can bring it to the track and you guys can try it. So race day, um, duplicate your long run. Don't overdrink or underdrink. I know that's so vague, but the best way to know that you are hydrated is if your pee is pale yellow. And <clears throat> you'll know if, you, if you're dehydrated that you're not peeing or it's super concentrated. Um, that means you need to drink another glass or two of water. You don't need to drink a gallon a day. I don't think that's necessary. Fruits and vegetables have lots of water and electrolytes, so you don't need to pound water. Drink to thirst, 20 ounces of water one hour before a run. So let's cover some more after run uh, fueling. The purpose is to jumpstart recovery. It's switching from breakdown mode during a workout to recovery mode. So start eating within three, 30 minutes of a workout. Aim for a ratio of four to one, which is like four grams of carb to one gram of protein. Um, and things like fruits, bars, smoothies, chocolate milk is great, fruit and yogurt, or a sandwich like peanut butter and jelly is one of my favorites because you can throw it in your bag and it, it, it's not going to go bad. You're not going to have any uh, bacteria issues. Um, these are quick tips for race week. So this is for taper week. Um, so you just want to increase your glycogen stores during that week. Um, you want to really start reducing the amount of fiber in your foods. If you're someone like, a, if you're plant-based and you're normally eating lots of beans and lentils, you're going to keep eating that because your body's used to it and that's your fuel source. So keep eating the, the beans, the lentils, potatoes, pasta, rice, all of those types of foods are great during the week and then the day before, really important before a long run as well as a marathon. And that's, you know, practice your fueling the day before a long run and make that like the day before your marathon. So it's like you want to have high carb foods, eat foods that you've tested before, no new foods. If you're eating out with friends or family, baked potatoes, pasta, bagels are great. So the night before a long run matters. Pasta, potatoes, have a high carb meal um, and low fat. So Thai noodles, like ordering in pad thai, that might be too much oil or grease. So you might want to try and make something at home and just use a little bit less oils. And a great big salad the night before a long run is probably going to be too much fiber. Uh, breakfast, which I've already gone over, high carb meal before marathon. Uh, hopefully you're waking up a little earlier before your race and getting in more carbohydrate. Another thing to note, if you do have to roll out of bed and go to a training run, try and get in a snack at night. That also can be helpful. So a carbohydrate rich snack, like a bowl of cereal or some toast at night, and then have a light snack in the morning. 
I was just talking to one of my athletes who had a 7 a.m. start, which is crazy early. And I said, let's just have a, a bowl of rice before you go to bed and then eat like part of a cliff bar before you start. And that worked out really well for her. Marathon day. Um, I always say like you want to race the last 10K with fuel in the tank. So like your whole fueling plan is really for the last 10K. That's how I like to look at it. So don't start at the, you know, when you start feeling lousy, you know, don't start your nutrition at mile 10 or 12. You need to start it at like mile five or earlier on and be aggressive with your fuels. So like maybe the first gel, maybe you take it right before you start and then take it again, like 45 minutes and then every 45 minutes after that. Or, you know, again, 30 to 50 grams per hour is what your body needs. Um, everyone's slightly different. So you have to see how you feel. And the whole purpose of that is to delay fatigue. And you wanna preserve all of the glycogen that's in your body and not use it up. So if you're eating gels, you're not going to use muscle glycogen, and that will be what you can use for that last 10K and end strong. Um, and again, staying hydrated, you wanna hydrate enough where your body has a good blood volume, but not too much where you have to go to the bathroom or it's sloshing. So that's something to practice. Um, and again, gels early and often. Fueling a marathon, here are just some tips. So like a banana is, I mean, I don't eat, fruit on a marathon during a marathon. I did that once and I had a terrible stomach ache, like in the Bronx for New York City. If anyone's running that for the first time, don't eat things that you've never had before. Um, even though it seems fun and you're kind of desperate, don't do it. Only stick with what you've brought and what you plan to have. Um, energy bars, you know, these are just some ideas on some fueling strategies. There's lots of different options. Whatever your body seems to like, whether it's the taste or the texture or anything like that. Um, let's see, I think I answered your summer training, summer, and so summer versus winter. Um, also in the summer, you're gonna use more energy. So you might need to, you might find that you need gels like every 35 minutes or 40. And then in the winter months, there's less exertion on your body. Um, so you probably can do 40 to 45 minutes for fuel and for hydration and you just feel a lot better. So more aggressive in the summer and that's okay. Um, let's see what else. So what should runners eat in general? The diet should consist of fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, lean proteins like chicken, fish, turkey, eggs, um, or protein like from uh, plant-based sources like lentils, beans, tofu, and healthy fats, avocado, nuts, seeds and limit alcohol and sweets. So if you do a long run, it doesn't mean you get to eat like a gigantic cupcake to celebrate. Um, you can have desserts and sweets and alcohol in moderation, totally fine. As long as most of your diet is filled with nutrient dense foods, those are perfectly fine. Sweets and alcohol are perfectly fine. Vitamins and supplements. Um, I am not a big fan of taking any types of vitamins or supplements. I always think food first is the best approach. If you've had low labs like iron, B12, um, or vitamin D, then you absolutely need supplements. So plant-based, those, those, um, those iron, vitamin D, calcium, B12 are really important for someone who's following a plant-based diet. Um, you, you don't get enough of that nutrition from food, and it's really helpful to supplement. Um, antioxidants for all runners is great because your body is just basically constantly in, inflamed, and antioxidants can help with inflammation. So that's from like fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. It's vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, vitamin A, um, all like the leafy greens, all, all different types of fresh fruits and fresh vegetables are great. Um, let's see, I do have a lot of plant-based runners and I, I really encourage them to focus on calcium, especially females. So calcium is really important. If you're not getting it from food, um, if you're, because you're not doing dairy, then there's lots of other ways to supplement. So like, uh, you could take pills, you can get it from different fortified milks. So like, I like soy milk. That's my favorite one to recommend for vegans or vegetarians because it's also higher in protein. 
the almond milk and oat milk is just super low in protein. There's like hardly any. And the calcium is just a full on supplement. Might as well just take a calcium supplement and, and, uh, and water. It's not that much more nutritious. Um, and if any of those vitamins are low in your body and your labs are showing low levels, it can absolutely affect performance. Uh, low iron can make you feel like you're carrying, like you're wearing one of those lead jackets all the time. Um, it's really, you feel very tired. Um, also, I hear that uh, at the end of a track workout, it's that last rep that someone cannot get through because their iron is low and they feel really lightheaded. Protein powders um, are only necessary if you don't have food available. So I have athletes that take it to the track and they'll have like a protein shake with a piece of fruit or they make a protein shake with lots of fruit when they come home just because it's easy and they know that they'll get the calories in that way. And I'm fine with it, but um, I really encourage food first. Um, probiotics, if you're experiencing GI issues, definitely can be helpful. Um, and then um, almost done. So recovery foods, uh, here are just some examples of foods that I really like. Um, a lot of this is homemade, things that you have in your house, uh, much more nutritious than getting things out. Sleep and rest. Best thing you can do is actually nothing. <laughs> Let your body rest. And recovery does wonders for your body. Helps your body digest food, improves mood, and resets hormones for your next workout. So I'm at the end of my talk, and I'm happy to take any additional questions if I didn't answer anything. Well, thank you so much. So if anyone has any question, you can raise your hand. You can also write it on the chat. We have only one question uh, written on the chat, which uh, you already addressed. Uh, okay, so Rosie uh, has a question. Go for it, Rosie. Um, question is, um, like last year when I was training for the marathon, I was trying to stick to a healthier diet. So I was eating everything healthy, smaller meals throughout the day, about six or seven meals. But I found that I was losing weight. So how can I prevent losing weight and staying to a healthy diet? That's an awesome question. So when you guys are running at the intensity that you are with Coach Medina and you're trying to achieve these times and goals, running at that level, you lose your appetite, basically. Intense running suppresses your appetite. So what I would say, Rosie, is that when that happens, like if, if that's happened to you before, I would get weights periodically because weight loss can lead to injury. And you wanna make sure that you're getting in more calories than at your meals, maybe bring snacks with you. And you might need to go beyond what your body is telling you. You might find that your body's telling you you're full, but you need more food. Your appetite is not going to tell you, it's not a reliable way to tell you that you are hungry or you're full. So you need extra food, maybe add a protein or a smoothie, not protein, but just like a smoothie with your meals to try and help boost, maybe do that with your lunch and your dinner and then keeping the other snacks throughout the day. But I would monitor your weight like periodically, like every week or so to make sure that it's not going down. Does that help? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anyone else? And you know that was a common issue we had, like even with Marie. So Marie did a um, a session with with Amy. So Marie um, learned that she has, just has to eat a, a lot more. And like uh, Amy emphasized, our uh, our bodies may not indicate uh, uh, that we are hungry, although you you are hungry or you, or you need more fuel. And so working with a nutritionist also helps uh, significantly here. This is something that is hard to determine. I believe that someone has to actually tell you <laughs> that, oh no, you have to eat a lot more. And I, and I think that that's uh, just difficult for some individuals. Yeah, and it's like, again, going beyond what your body is telling you. Your body's telling you that you're not hungry, but you actually still have to eat even though you're not feeling the hunger. And again, it's to tell your body, recover, recover, get stronger, food is coming, build muscle, recover your bones. That's what it's telling you. And if you're dropping weight, 
like consistently and unintentionally, then you need to address like, okay, I need to add something to my meal. Something is not working. You could do colder foods and that's why I like smoothies. It's easier to get that in if you're not really wanting it. Christina has a question. Go for it, Christina. Hi, I was just wondering, um, like during like uh, your menstrual cycle, the, the second part of the cycle post ovulation, I, my performance drops. And I was wondering if like there's any foods or just any type of nutrition that'll like assist during that part of the cycle to help um, keep performance up. That's a great question. And that is a tough thing. Um, so the second part of the menstrual cycle, definitely like people have like women have like a, the performance is not ideal. It's much better in the first half. Um, you have a little more insulin resistance and your body does not process carbohydrates the same way. So are there things you could do? I think it depends on what <laughs> the PMS symptom is. If it's low energy, then maybe eating smaller meals more frequently. Um, if it's like cramping and physical symptoms, I actually have a slide that I could send you. It's like foods to help with PMS. It's very specific. Like taking in more vitamin D can be really helpful in those last two weeks of your cycle. Um, it reduces a lot of the bloating. It reduces the cramping. Um, some really good studies have been shown that that can be helpful. So vitamin D, lower sodium foods for the last two weeks can be also helpful for reduced bloating. Um, but I think smaller meals, if you're having a craving, then ha you can have chocolate or whatever the, the food is. Um, I think that's fine. Um, other things for low energy, no, just get a lot of sleep and rest and realize, like I would definitely encourage women, track your period, know when that's coming. So you can look and say, well, that was not a great tempo. Why did I, why did that feel like so much more work? Oh, I see, I, I see where I am in my, my schedule or my period cycle. I know I'll be better next time. Like you can kind of anticipate it and know it's coming. Um, and also it can be helpful to track, to know if you're missing it and uh, you're missing a period, which is also really important. So I can follow up. Um, I could send that to coach or I could post it on my Instagram and you could see that um, slide. I haven't posted that yet. I didn't know if other people would want to see it, but I'll send it up. I'll post it up. No, that's actually extremely important because 85% um, even if you can look at the, the list of names, 80, at least 85% of our athletes are female. So oh, even, okay. even when uh, you show up to the track, I tell the guys, so like you, just one to 10, uh, like in, in the last session, the majority, I think we are predominantly a uh, female uh, powered group. Oh, awesome. Okay, I will absolutely post that. And you can, and I'll send that to coach as well. So you guys can all see that. Yeah, you can even, I believe they were, uh, I think, um, respond through the email where they were uh, sending you questions. Oh, yeah. so we'll do that. Okay, great. No problem. I'll double check, but then, but yes, yeah, so we, we are predominantly female driven. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. Are there? Um, hi, Amy. And um, I'm actually glad that you mentioned um, the um, period thing. Um, actually, I would like to ask, um, so I am 49, which means that I'm going through the, the phase. And <laughs> um, I'm not sure how uh, male runners uh, feel comfortable about this um, topic, but do you have any suggestions or uh, diet um, food suggestions for those who are, you know, going through like perimenopause? Because it definitely affects the energy level, the performance, and since we cannot really um, gauge when the next uh, period is coming. So if you yeah. have, any, yes, that would be great. I think, um, you know, during that perimenopause time, I think hydration is really, really important because you're sometimes you're having more sweating episodes, especially in the summer. So you're losing more water than maybe you normally would. Um, and you may not know, maybe at night you're having some sweat, sweating episodes and you don't even realize how much you're losing. So making sure that you're extra hydrated. Um, so again, checking your urine and making sure that you're peeing throughout the day and it's pale yellow. Uh, I was just taking notes here and sleep. Sleep is your best way to recover and to kind of combat the fatigue. Um, I think that can be really helpful to make sure that you're prioritizing sleep turning off electronics half an hour earlier, um, maybe during certain times, or if you feel tired, taking a nap or resting. 
I think can be really helpful to recharge. Um, and also eating really, um, eating balanced meals, meaning like carbohydrate and protein, because sometimes there could be some insulin resistance just in that time period. So carbohydrates. So if you're eating like half a bagel, make sure you're having protein with it. So maybe like you can even do like a little avocado on there or maybe some low fat ricotta cheese. So you're getting some high quality protein along or high quality fats even along with some carbohydrates. So you don't get like a surge in sugar or carbohydrates. So um, small meals can also be really helpful. Um, I don't know if there's any bloating, if you have anything like that, but that's oftentimes a symptom that I hear about. So avoiding really large meals and trying to eat smaller meals throughout the day. Um, also exercising in the morning, I think can be really helpful. Literally the alarm goes off, you get out the door. So there's less time to feel tired and all of a sudden you're running and then you focus on your task that you have to do. Um, and then it can energize you for the rest of the day. I think that can be very helpful as well. I've seen that with other people and kind of sets the stage for the day. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I prefer in the morning as well. It does set the day too. So. Yeah, it helps get through that. I mean, it, yeah, unfortunately, there's not much else we can do. Um, soy, there is, uh, there is some evidence that soy can help eating soy foods with soy. So like tofu, edamame, um, soy milk can be helpful um, because it helps with estrogen production. So those, and there, it's not too much and it doesn't, it's not linked with breast cancer because it's only small quantities. So, you know, I wouldn't say doing soy protein shakes all day long, but having soy in your diet can be very helpful too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. These are great questions. What else? Anyone else have any others? Um, so I don't see any raised hands or, um, okay, someone raised their hands. Geraldine, go for it, Geraldine. I thank you very much. This has been very informative. So thank you very much, first of all. Um, second, I wanted to know about um, uh, somewhat uh, tackling on, on the other people's, the women's um, issues in terms of like mood. Sometimes that can be very, very uh dealing with performance and everything. Are there any foods that you know would help in terms of mood and, and energy or so, rather than just maybe taking caffeine or something like that? So. Yeah, like, I mean, first I think caffeine is great for that, but um, I do think um, eating regular at regular times. So yeah, let's go over that. There is a really good study, actually I have it right here. Um, one of my coaches, uh, John Troutman just sent this to me. He knows I love really good studies. It's recommendations for nutritional considerations for female athletes. So I can summarize this and send you guys the notes from this because um, I think it's really helpful and addresses a lot of these things in more detail. But um, I would say eat at regular times. So, and this can be for all athletes. Breakfast needs to be like more structured, like eating at you know, whenever, like if you're going for a run at seven, back at eight, eight thirty, breakfast has to happen at nine because then you know you're eating lunch at twelve. So eating on a regular schedule can be really, really helpful to stabilize your mood, stabilize your food to stabilize your mood. So don't eat so much at lunch that you can't even eat dinner. And then it's like ten o'clock at night, you're like, I'm hungry. So more structured and eating similar every day. So not eating a gigantic lunch and then not being able to eat snacks and it throws you off. So you guys know what I'm talking about when you kind of are erratic, um, no skipping lunch, no try not to delay it if you're working during the day. I think most people have a hard time with lunch. So if you skip a lunch or eat later, then it's like now you've had this workout in the morning, your body's using energy still, even though you're not exercising anymore, and it's like in a depletion mode and it needs energy. Um, and then you end up eating too much food later and it can kind of contribute to the mood fluctuation. So stabilize the, the food to stabilize your mood. And I think that's literally one of the hardest things that, and one of the most common things I work with um, a lot of clients is just being consistent with your food. It's like you're consistent with your runs. You know when you're going for your run. Dial in the food to support that. 
so you can get the most out of it. And then you know, like, okay, this is a lunch and I'm eating with my friends, but like, what do I normally eat on my own? Try and mimic that. Like, let's say you go out for tacos with your friends at lunch and you eat some gigantic burrito and you normally eat a salad from sweet green with quinoa. Like that's a lot more food. So it's going to affect the rest of your day. So, and it can make you sluggish. Your body's not ready for it. Um, maybe, you know, you make adjustments or trying to eat as similar as you can. A bit of a follow-up question, if only if no one else has a question, so. Yeah, go for it, Jeremy. Because it may be a little bit specific, but maybe someone may have this issue. So on my, on my first um, marathon, during my long runs and everything, didn't have any GI issues, was able to do everything fine. Come marathon, marathon day, mile eight or so, serious cramping, GI issue and everything. And I, I believe, I mean, I didn't have the um, benefit of, uh, you know, this presentation in Coach Medina at that time, but I believe I was consistent or at least doing the same things um, and, and diff had to take significant bathroom breaks during the uh, marathon and, of course, cramping or so. Um, some people have said maybe it was anxiety or just race day jitters, uh, but um, it happened for the other marathons as well. So I was wondering if oh. maybe there's something that you can um, uh, put on that. But the other marathons were in rapid succession as well. So I don't know if that makes a difference within one month. Okay, so it can definitely be the jitters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's de that's definitely possible, like trying to stay more calm so you don't, you know, because if you're nervous, what happens is your body kind of gets into this fight or flight mode. It thinks it has to like run from a bear. And so it's like you're trying to digest food when you're running from a bear and your body cannot do both. So you're in this fight or flight response and nothing is going to get digested. So try to stay calm if you can. Um, before I ran Philly, I literally sat in a hotel room with my two friends and we didn't move. <laughs> we did a shakeout and then just sat and ate and talked and like do something calming the day before to keep you feeling like dialed in. Um, but food wise, eat rice, like lots of rice the day before. So there's really not like you're, you're going easy on your gut or maybe another food that you know you feel good with um, that, that responds well, like low fiber. And if you must take a modium, that might be something I just recommended that to someone, um, one of my athletes to take a modium, uh, because she was having a lot of GI issues on, even on her like medium long runs, you know, as you're running, you have to remember too, like a run, you're shaking your gut. Like it is shaking. It's not like riding a bike. You're literally taking food and just shaking it. Maybe you can eat a little earlier and let your body clear it. Um, uh, Dina Castor, who's like an amazing marathoner, she would wake up at like three in the morning, eat a bowl of oatmeal, and then go back to bed and then wake up for a 7 a.m. start. So it's like once you eat that food, let your body digest it. And, you know, maybe that can be helpful, like to get that pre-race food out of your system um, and change up the gels. So more natural things, that's another thing I've been talking about. Like make sure there's no caffeine or limit your caffeine. If that's something, you know, you know, you may wanna reduce the amount that you're having in general. Um, and make sure that just gels don't have any caffeine if that's not something you've had before. Um, but um, change up the product so that it has all natural ingredients. Um, I think honey stinger is what I recommended to somebody or using honey because that's a natural food. When you're reading labels, like I always write down ingredients, uh, sugar substitutes are so hidden. They're like ascofame K, sucralose. Um, I think the Martin looked pretty good. It literally is just simplified fructose and glucose. Uh, my only concern with that, it's like a super gel, I think it had. I didn't love that. Um, so, you know, hopefully these are enough tips, you know, and then hydration. So staying, I would do, I would practice using a modium, like on a long run, use a modium, see what that feels like, and then see how your stomach feels before your marathon. And maybe you want to just take one. It's not harmful. You're just not going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and, you know, you may have to like load up on the fiber after, <laughs> um, but it will prevent you from eliminating during a race.
Yeah, she also commented whether uh, when you mention rice, should it be either white, brown, or both are fine? If you're using it to prevent diarrhea or bowel movements, then it's white. If you're eating it just on a regular weekday and you're just, you know, still like weeks away from your race, then brown rice is more nutritious because it's just a more nutrient dense food. Um, but it, if you hate it, you don't have to force it. White rice is also totally fine to have. I have four kids and I make white rice just because that's what they'll eat. If I make brown, I'm the only one eating it and it's a lot. <laughs> so um, I, it's, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. <laughs> Uh, I just like to mention something that you mentioned before. It's like uh, with the with the with the meal the night before. We typically try to avoid the non saucy meal. So people might eat the pasta and eat the carbs, but they they may contain so much sauce and things like that that might upset your stomach the next day. Yeah, and like I always like I, I went to the Olympic trials with my team last year, and their races are two minutes long, <laughs> and there is no room for a GI issue. Like I cannot have a, an athlete start a two minute race or actually it was 345. I think they ran or something. They cannot have a GI issue, a lot of pressure on the dietitian. But um, so I would just make plain pasta um, with like very little sauce, if any, and just like plain foods, bananas, rice, breads, things that I know that they've had and, um, you know, just to eliminate any concern, like take nutrition out of the equation so you could focus on the running and your plan. That's enough. Yeah. And the point of this talk is to like build confidence with your nutrition. I think there's so much information out there and, you know, know where you're getting your information. Who's your source? Is it a dietitian? Is it your friend? You know, like there's a lot. So if you have any questions at any time, you can always ask me. I'm always happy to answer to the best that I can. Um, and just, yeah, know where your information is coming from and what might work for someone else might not be the best for you. There's so many options and so many ways to approach it. Um, and what I also told my guys, um, some of the guys on my team, they're like really young. They just graduated college. They're pro athletes. I said it, it's, I said it's like Wade Boggs. Find out what works for you and repeat it over and over. Wade Boggs would have fried chicken before every game. Just so he, yeah, he would have fried chicken. He was superstitious. He was extremely superstitious. And if you don't know him, he's a, a famous baseball player, a very successful, amazing player. But he's known for eating fried chicken before every game. So figure out your fried chicken or your Wade Boggs and just repeat that over and over and over. I love that analogy. You got to share it with my father. <laughs> Wade Boggs, I remember. Oh, him. he's a baseball fan? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a huge baseball fan. <laughs> oh, awesome. So, yeah, there. that's why I use it, to so people connect and they'll remember. My, yeah. yeah, they loved when I said that to them, too. <laughs> All right, so there are no other questions. Uh, just remind you, reiterate that you can reach out to Amy via email. You should have her email. She is also very responsive via Instagram. Uh, and we strongly uh, recommend her. She's a very, very valuable source and we're lucky to have her. Great, well, thanks so much, you guys. It was nice seeing everyone and hopefully I'll get to see you guys at track soon. All right, thank you so much. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Great to see everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Medina, do you mind giving me her email address, please? Uh, yes, I'll send it uh, to you. You should have received. You should have re yes on the website that you should have received it when we send you the email about the presentation. Okay, good. Okay, it's, uh, it's it should be in in that email. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. This is very helpful. You're welcome. All right. Bye. See you bye. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>